Good evening and welcome to Dukasashu's Meet the Management series. I'm Dogozu Kumalo and I'll be your host for tonight as we unpack venture capital space in Africa. And tonight we're in conversation with Kalon Venture Partners, one of South Africa's leading venture capital funds formed in 2016. An investor in the likes of Ozo, Finchet, Bot, and Flow, the VC invests in post-revenue startups with high growth and high impact potential, and has so far invested or backed nine disruptive South African technology companies. And for more insights, I'm joined by its CEO, um, Clive Butko, as well as COO, Liron Varsha. Thank you so much for your time, gentlemen. Yeah, thank, thank you. you very much for the inv invitation. I think we can jump right in um, tonight. Clive, according to your profile, Kalon invests in people and not ideas or products, but entrepreneurs who see the world differently and build solutions for Africa. Can you unpack a little bit who this entrepreneur is and what kind of disruptive solutions are they bringing to the market? Yeah, thanks. Uh, I think first of all, it's not entrepreneur, it's entrepreneurs. So I think we prefer to build, uh, invest in teams as opposed to investing in, in individuals. If you look at Flow as an example, it's a great example where it's two, uh, Dan and Gil, are two ex-entrepreneurs who built a big business and sold it. And now we invested in Flow and they are doing remarkably well. That's a property tech company. But they have the vision, they have the experience of building companies because they have deep technical domain expertise around marketing and advertising and property technology. So not only were they you know the timing was right for the company the people were absolutely right for the company as well because they brought all that very specific type of expertise and really they they the flow solution and as an example i'm just using that as an example is disrupting the property tech uh, environment or the or the vertical so they've got a very disruptive solution it, it supports the the agents out there it doesn't try and disrupt the agent it supports the agent in helping them uh, secure uh, you know leasing and selling of property far cheaper, quicker, and better. So it's very dis much disrupting an industry that has not been disrupted, probably never, really, by technology. Mm -hmm. So you're seeing quite a few of these countries, uh, companies around the globe that's starting to disrupt the property sector. And we got in very early with, 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 uh, with Flow, but the company is having a remarkable run now and actually going ahead and raising their Series A, a big uh, 10, $15 million round of, of capital. Mm. Liron, let's bring you in here speaking about funds. Can you give us some insights into the funds that you have available um, for startups and what the process is for accessing those funds? Good evening, everyone. I'm excited to share insights into the VC world tonight. Thank you, Nkosa, for the introduction. Kalon has raised over a quarter of a billion rand to invest in disruptive tech growth stage businesses. Um, a business is considered to be at growth stage once they've achieved product market fit, they have growing revenues to show. And we do not invest in ideas, we invest in the best revenue producing tech businesses. Um, we have sufficient funds available. Our first fund is fully deployed and our second fund is 60% deployed. And if you believe you have the right tech business um, that's on part to some of the solutions Clive mentioned, um, then just get in touch with us. You can go onto our website or you can contact myself or Clive. Mm. I think maybe just to can just add to that quickly, just, just to, so we're clear on what we mean by tech, because a lot of people don't always understand what we mean by tech. We're talking about yeah. software tech. So we're not talking about solar panel technology. We're not talking about the next MRI scan that uh, cures cancer. We're not, that's not what we invest in. We invest in software technology. So businesses that use artificial intelligence or machine learning, or augmented reality, it must be software technology that's, you know, very um, uh, capital light and we can take it not only to Africa, but all, all the way around the world. And we just need the internet to do that. We don't need to have any physical distribution channels. So it's very, very capital light and capital, uh, capital efficient opposed to very capital um, ineffective or inefficient businesses, which we don't invest in at all. Mm. And you've kind of almost answered the next question because I was going to go into the likes of sca car scan and them. You investing in those startups, what really sets them apart from any other startup that you would within the tech space? And you're saying it's more that safe software and where the cop capital goes further. Yeah, well, I think is so a good example. Yeah. You know, maybe slightly different to uh, our normal strategies to invest in high growth uh, uh, tech startups, as as Liron mentioned. But, but CarScan was slightly different. They'd been around for two, three years developing their product and really developed a product that disintermediates the insurance industry, 
and the automotive industry. And they had very little traction when we made the investment. But we saw something special, not only in the technology. We don't invest in technology. We invest in people and the problems that they solve and they, in a very large target addressable market. So the reason we invested in CarScan is because it really does solve many, many problems in the automotive industry. It makes the insurance industry a lot easier. And uh, for, for many, these and many, many other use cases, it's made many users' lives a lot easier, save their money, uh, increase the customer experience. And the business is really starting to take off now. We've got clients in India, in the Middle East, uh, in Nigeria, in Kenya, and South Africa. So we've got clients in five countries, and I think it just shows and validates our investment that we made in CarScan is how they are, are quickly, rapidly deploying their technology in many, many clients, but, but many countries as well. Mm. And Liron, just before we get into some of the questions that we had coming in on social media, um, you know, one of your key criteria in investment in an underlying company is identifying a clear exit strategy. Could you unpack this a little bit more for us? What does, you know, that exit strategy mean and how is the exit strategy built into the structure of the company from the initial investment? Well, we look carefully at the type of, you know, where, where that company fits in, what the industry is, what the potential, as you say, what are the potential uh, exits? Um, and they can be from various from selling to other larger companies. It could be through IPO. So there's, there's a lot of different criteria to consider when you uh, look at what potential exits are. Um, and obviously, it will depend on the stage of the business, uh, where that business is, um, because a lot of the businesses we're investing in are still very much at growth stage. So we're looking for them to spend a few years um, scaling and growing revenue and, and also even doing some acquisitions, getting into the market, um, et cetera. So there, there's a lot of considerations around exit strategies, and we do look at the potential and obviously the potential value of the business uh, once we do exit the business in the future. Great. Um, I've jotted down some three question here that came through social media as we were um, talking about this session. And I think I'll just run through three of them and we can quickly um, wrap them up and answer. The first is what does Treasury's move to scrap the 12J tax incentive back in July last year mean for 12J investments in the future? And the second question is, there's a call for corporates in South Africa to introduce capital funding programs. What are some of the discussions um, in the VC hallways, such as Colin Venture Partners? And the last question is, where do you think the balancing act between VC firms and startups in SA is to ensure that investment goes into startups that can grow sustain sustainably? So, Lauren, why don't you handle the first one about 12J? Sure. Um, with regards to 12J, um, effectively, as, as a scalable tech company, um, it doesn't really affect us. We, we have a very, very uh, good business model. 12J um, obviously assists with you know, high net worth individuals, individuals that are looking, retail investors that are looking to get into investing that are looking for more of a, a lower risk option. But as a tech fund, um, you know, uh, we... We typically are a high risk, high reward solution. We give, you know, unbelievable returns and we obviously invest in the best companies. So the 12J, although it is over, um, it had its place in kickstarting a few of the, the funds, um, providing a lot of capital or early capital. Um, but from our perspective as a tech VC fund, um, we're looking for much more um, growth going forward and, and even further capital from various uh, different parties. So maybe you can remind me of the second question. It's been too long since that question was asked. <laughs> So the question is, um, there's a call for corporates in South Africa to introduce capital funding programs. What are some of the discussions um, taking place in the VC hallways in regard to, you know, corporates setting up these capital funding programs? I think, yeah, that's a good question. Let me just start at a more macro level. If you just look at Africa for a second, which obviously includes South Africa, the amount of capital just really interesting. I read a statistic today that in seven weeks of this year, which is basically what's gone January and February, we've raised $1 billion of capital going into Africa. And that's coming from all over the world into South African VCs, into African VCs. 
Uh, last year it took uh, five months. The year before it took about eleven months, and, and before that it took a couple of years to get to the billion. Last year, last year, uh, African uh, entrepreneur startups raised five to six billion dollars. So that shows how much capital is actually hitting our shores, and that capital is coming from private entities like ourselves, and it's coming from institutional investors, and it's coming from corporates as well. So I think you know there are lots of discussions. I know uh, Standard Bank is an example of investing in one of our competitors. And we're speaking to a number of other companies. We now have been in discussions with a institutional investor about putting quite a nice size check into Kalon to continue with our growth into, um, into this disruptive technology, not worry about Section 12J anymore. So I would say the question is, you know, the, it's never going to be enough. I think if you still, even 5 billion, if you still look at that relative to the, to the globe, it's still very, very small percentage is flying into Africa. But the point is that it's flying. It, it used to be a, a little drop a drop coming out of a tap. Now it's actually the tap is open and it's flying out the tap. So it's, we're in a far better situation, but it can get better and better and better. And that's why I think um, a lot more synergy between corporates understanding the need for this capital, particularly in the, in the very you know, low cost type of tech companies you can invest in and then realizing they need to get into this asset class because it's, it's an asset class for one that the country needs that creates jobs. But secondly, it, has you know outsized returns, so it actually it makes absolute sense for, for them to invest in. And the other question was, you know, one of the challenges we have. Whilst I say there's more capital, where we have a big challenge is there's not enough capital for really early stage startups in this country. There's a lot of capital for we give like for growth capital for Series B, Series C, mezzanine capital, and those sort of places for capital. So when someone's raising five, ten, fifty million dollars, there's lots of capital all over the place. And, and, and you can get it from other parts of the world or get it from parts that are putting money into Africa. But what we don't have, we don't have a very sophisticated or mature angel investing network. So, there's, so in, there is insufficient capital for the idea that someone has or for the product. They've just built a product but they haven't got any traction. I, they've got no clients yet. There's just, you know, the, the rich father, the rich uncle or the rich whoever is investing in that. And there are some other angel investors. But, you know, compared to the US or or many parts of Europe and Israel, we're very, very, very immature regarding angel investing. And, and that's, the, that's the area, I think, is the most important area in South Africa, that we need more capital, because more capital flows into the early stage company, enables us to invest when they get to later stage. And if you don't get the early stage capital, those companies often just die, and they never get a chance to go to companies like ourselves for venture capital funding. So if, if, if anyone is listening on this call, if, you know, the more money we can make available, early on for these companies i think we've got great entrepreneurs we've got great ideas we just don't have enough capital and that's what we need mm. and Liron, i think just you know carrying on from where Clive left off you you know he recently spoke about you recently concluding a successful capital raise last year um i know there's already probably plans already underway for that but where do you see the the investment opportunities in the medium to long term and which markets on the continent do you think that you're really seeing those investment opportunities coming up so we review thousands of opportunities and we invest in only a handful. Um, you know, to date, Calon has invested in nine, our first fund has invested in nine companies and seven companies from our second fund. Um, you know, when we, as we're doing the deals, we, we don't mention the names of the current opportunities. Usually we're under NDA and, and with some of them, we even wait until they conclude their, their capital rounds. Um, but, uh, you know, we're looking at all different types of businesses, some in the security tech space, um, you know, uh, fintech, travel tech. Um, so there's some very exciting businesses that we're looking in. Um, at the moment, being a 12J fund, we focused on the South African market. However, we've seen there's a wealth of opportunities in the African market. Um, you know, uh, contacts from Kalon, et cetera, we believe that there will be opportunities in the future uh, growing into Africa as well. And I think just to close it off, gentlemen, um, for some of the entrepreneurs and startups that will be watching this um, playback, looking for funding, but are not quite ready. So they might meet all the other criteria, but there's just elements that, that are not quite ready. What, what are the shortcomings that you often come across um, for those startups looking for funding? And what do you advise for them to, to really work on, let's say, in the next year to ensure that they do get ready for investments? Well, I think, you know, entrepreneurs are resourceful people. So number one is they, 
<clears throat> they can't start their can't start a business because they haven't got capital. Because if it's building a, a manufacturing facility, no one's going to invest you until you're a proven entrepreneur. But if it's a tech business, we all you need is you know literally you need a a Wi-Fi connection and an iPad, and you can mail to code. You can you can start a tech business that you can take to seven, eight billion people on the planet. So I think the important thing here is my advice to anyone is one thing you do have. Every single entrepreneur has this is 100% equity. They've got equity. They might not have capital, but they've got equity. So go and find yourself. If you're a, a good salesperson, maybe you need a good engineer that can that can build some really good tech, but you don't know how to build tech. So go and give someone 20% of your business and let them come on for, for no salary initially until until you start generating revenue. So my, my, my answer in one word is bootstrapping. Just bootstrap for as long as you can. It, you know, I hear too often now, why didn't you succeed? I couldn't raise capital. And that's just a lame excuse. I'll be honest with you. You've got to be more resourceful because very, very few businesses raise capital, as Laron was mentioning earlier. But there's a lot more businesses that actually survive. And they've been, they're just being resourceful. So they're going out, finding a team, paying advisors, paying their lawyer through equity. They're just doing resourceful things. And they get the business off the ground. They then start, you know, getting uh, paid uh, fees or, or, or making sales. And their business starts taking off and then they start hiring their first few people and, uh, you know, have a few clients. And then once they've got 10 clients and they're doing, you know, a half a million a month, they come and knock on our doors, Kaylon, and we, we want to chat to them. You know, that's the time we're very interested in having that conversation. So don't find an excuse, find a reason. Find a reason why you can, not an excuse why you can't. Because it really, if you come to me, I'm, I'm the, the, the find, find an answer type of guy, find a solution type of guy. You know, if you really need a lot of capital, it's the wrong business for you. Then find a business that, that is very capital light that you don't need a lot of capital. So I'm simplifying it, but honestly, that's how I built many businesses. And there's no reason for anyone that, on that call tonight that shouldn't build businesses in exactly the same way. Mm. You're on any last point, words? Clive. Yes, I suppose to add to, to what Clive's saying is, um, you know, focus on, on your customers. Make sure you understand your customers. You find that many early stage businesses haven't really understood the problem that they're solving. They haven't really understood what the customer's key pa uh, pain points are. And that's, you know, it's so important that you actually spend time and that you've got a customer that's actually willing to pay for your product, that you're not just giving it away free. Um, so I think that's also something that, that early stage entrepreneurs fail to understand. Mm. Thank you so much. Gentlemen, thank you. It was uh, quite an insightful, insightful conversation and we will have the playback available um, for anyone who joined the call and would like to just listen to it again or share with your network. Um, and everyone can then join us on the 8th of March. We'll be chatting to Newtown Partners. Thank you, Liran. Thank you, Cloud, for your time. No, an absolute thank pleasure. You very much. If anyone wants to get hold of us, just contact Liran on Liran, L-E-R-O-N-V at kalonvp.com. If they have any opportunities or, any, or they want to chat to us about their business, please don't hesitate to do that. Thank you so much, Klaus. Thank, thank you very much. Thank you very Thanks much. Thanks, Thanks for